In this video, you will learn how to display pie charts and bar charts on maps like this using QGIS. So one of the essential requirements for this is making sure that you have gotten the data that you would like to display into the attribute table of the relevant uh, geospatial data layer. Now I have selected a couple of geospatial data sets for the purpose of this tutorial. So I'm going to drag and drop this first data set which is called population of the states and that's basically a data set or a geospatial data set that shows state level administrative information of Germany and if I were to go ahead and open up the attribute table you'd be able to see some population information so there's a column called state which tells us the name of the state and in addition to that we have information pertaining to the number of Germans living in each state and the number of foreigners in those states. So if you think about it, if we add up these two numbers, that'll basically tell us the total population of each state. And I'm going to make use of this set of information to create my pie charts. So as I told you guys, it's quite crucial that before we even go to the step of trying to display anything as a pie chart or a bar chart on our map, it's essential that you sort this part out, which means getting this corresponding data into the attribute table of the corresponding geospatial data layer. Now, assuming you guys have done that, what we can do is we can head back to the corresponding layer and go to properties. And right over here, you're going to get a tab called diagrams. And this is where we get to select the corresponding chart that we would like to display. So when I click right over here, I can select pie chart, text diagram, histogram, stack bars. So let's just go ahead and open up this or select this pie chart option. And after that, I'm going to click on this attributes tab right over here. And this is where we get to select exactly what sort of properties we would like to display on our map. Now, if you can recall the attribute table, we had three columns. We had state, the number of Germans and the number of foreigners. And of course, the only information that I would like to display on the map as a pie chart would be just these two pieces of information. So I'm just going to sort of bulk select these two fields, Germans and foreigners. And after that, I'm just going to click on this plus sign, which is going to move just the selected attributes over to the right hand side so that QGIS knows what exactly to display. And uh, automatically a color gets assigned for each category. I'm just going to well, change this color to be something a little bit more vibrant, like this. And without even touching any of these other properties, if I just go ahead and click on apply, well, you're going to get the pie charts like this. We can click OK and just exit out from here. And I think this pretty much covers most of the things that we wanted to get done. So for each state, if you zoom in, you can see that it's going to have its own sort of pie chart. And if you wanted to see what's the population division, you kind of can get a quick idea about the population division just by looking at this pie chart. And in case if you're confused about the two colors, you actually do have sort of a reference right over here, which says that the number of foreigners are displayed in this green color and the number of Germans are displayed in pink color. Now we'll take this just up a notch and see what sort of other settings we can actually play around with in order to make our pie chart a little bit more informative. So if you go ahead and click on rendering, you can control things like the opacity. Let's say if you drop this down all the way down, you can see that it affects the opacity of each pie chart. I'm just going to keep this at 100%. And in terms of the size, well, you can select the units right over here. I'm going to set this to millimeters and you can play around with the size. For example, let's say if I put something like 30, it's just going to increase the size of the pie chart. But I think something like 12 would be nice. And when it comes to placement, well, you can place the pie chart over the centroid of each sort of polygon. That's the default setting. But in case if you want to move it around just a little bit, Let's see if you're interested in keeping this maybe somewhere around the perimeter. You can actually click on something like this and that should move over to the perimeter. And instead of over centroid, you can actually keep it around centroid and specify a distance manually. 
let's say if I say 25 or something like that, then it's going to actually get adjusted. You can play around with this value according to what you're looking for. And that actually pretty much covers what I wanted to discuss with regard to pie charts. Now, you can actually make this map a bit more informative by maybe adding the corresponding labels of each state, just so that we can recognize what state is what. So under labels, if you select a single labels right over here, you again will have access to the three different uh, columns or field names. And from here, if you just select state and click on apply, that's going to display the corresponding state name. And along with that, if you want to make any changes to the regular symbology, for example, let's say if you want to go with a different color for the fill color, if you wanted to knock down the opacity just a little bit like this, well, you could do all sorts of stuff like that to make your map a bit more informative. And when we talk about a data set like this, which displays the number of foreigners and Germans in each state, it actually makes sense to use something like pie chart because adding these two values still produces some sort of an intrinsic property about each state and that would actually give us the total population of each state. So definitely pie chart is a good choice for this option. But that's not to say that you can use any other types of charts. For example, let's say if you're interested in displaying the same thing using a bar chart, you could actually still do that by heading over to properties and this time, instead of selecting pie chart, we can actually select this histogram option. Now, whenever you do that, if you simply just go ahead and click on apply, you probably won't see anything in the first instance because there's something quite crucial that you have to set, especially when you're dealing with histograms or if, you are in, if you're interested in creating bar charts and that's some size options which uh, doesn't get configured by default whenever you select histogram. Now, one thing you'll notice is that you can no longer select this fixed size option. So that's something that you have to deal with. If you wanted to create uh, bar charts, it automatically resorts to this scaled size option. Now, over here, you have to select a couple of things. So bar length, it's, it's quite straightforward. Let's say I'm just going to go with an arbitrary value like 10 and over here, you have to select an attribute out of this. So the reason for doing this is actually for QGIS to determine what sort of a linear scale it should be using. So it doesn't really matter whether you select Germans or foreigners. For example, let's say if I go with Germans, it lets us obtain the maximum value instantly by scanning for the maximum value under this Germans column, which gives us, well, the maximum population value like this whenever you click on this find button and if you were to actually select foreigners then you're going to find the corresponding maximum value pertaining to foreigners in this case and as it says over here the bar length is going to get adjusted or scaled linearly according to this so a population value of 2,936,791 is actually going to get displayed with a bar length of 10 so a population value that's slightly higher than this is actually going to get displayed with a bar length that's slightly higher than 10. And a population of exactly half of this is actually going to get displayed with a bar length of 5. So that's how it actually manages to sort of automatically rescale the bar lengths accordingly, depending on how you decide to actually specify the attribute and the maximum value. So I'm just going to set this to be my maximum value. That's totally fine and click on apply and you can see now for each state we managed to create a bar chart that looks like this and for some reason if you're not really happy with the corresponding bar length that's associated with this sort of a population magnitude you can just slightly well increase and that's going to affect the bar lengths of well both categories as you can see right over here and immediately you might notice something a bit odd. For example, at least to my liking, I think the bars are a bit too spaced apart. You can go to rendering and adjust things like the bar width and the bar spacing. I'm going to knock this all the way down to about 0.2 and see how that looks. Yeah, I think that looks fine. And uh, bar width, of course, if you want to flatten, well, not really flatten, but if you want to kind of expand this the width of the bar horizontally, you can put something like 10 and 
that's going to increase the bar width. I think five is quite all right. So this is how you actually create bar charts on your map using QJs. Now, again, as I told you guys, depending on what sort of a property you're trying to represent, I think in this particular case, well, it's not terrible to actually use a bar chart, but I would have actually preferred something like a pie chart just based on the type of information that we are trying to represent over here. Now I'm going to give you guys a quick additional example. So I have another data set called MHI, which I'm going to drag and drop it over here. So let's deactivate this for the time being. I'm going to zoom into this layer and well, this is a map of the US. And if I go ahead and open this up, that's actually going to show us the median household income of each state of the United States for the years 2020, 2021 and 2022. Unlike the previous data set, you can see that adding these three for a particular state, it doesn't really tell us some sort of an intrinsic property about that state unless we specifically define a category called the total median household income. So I think bar charts are much more suited to represent this kind of discrete data. So just as a quick exercise, what I can do is I can right click over here and go to properties, select diagrams and go with histogram. Make sure that I select the three years like this, select a few colors that's a bit more vibrant like this. And when it comes to size, again, I'm just going to go with maybe the population of 2022 column and going to find the maximum value like this and click on apply. Now, obviously it's going to get cluttered up just because of the number of polygons that we have in this particular data set. So obviously we're going to have to make some changes. I'm going to set the bar width to be only about three and the bar spacing to be about 0.2. Click on apply. And then I'm also going to maybe increase the bar size just a little bit and placement. I'm also going to select around centroid and as the label, I'm also going to select, well, the corresponding name of the state like this. And now if I zoom into the corresponding state, well, I would be able to see median household income corresponding to years 2020, 2021 and 2022 like this. And you probably might think that I could have even increase the bar size just a little bit more so that the differences of this uh, median household income would be a bit more apparent than what it is right now. But I think you guys get the basic idea. The objective of this tutorial is to actually explore the opportunities around creating pie charts and bar charts for maps like this using QGIS. Hope the tutorial was helpful for you guys. If you do have any questions, add a comment down below and I'll see you guys again with another tutorial like this.